I think everyone should try to thrift. It's yes. just like a fun like thing to do. Quest. It's a fun yeah. design, treasure like, hunt. Because yeah. you yeah. come in with like an idea of what you want. You're like, ooh, I want like a sweater vest. And then you come out with like, I don't know, a ball gown. And you're like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> who knew I'd find this today? Hello and welcome to yet another glorious episode of Behind the Choices with Panago Pizza. Mm -hmm. We are your hosts. I'm Matt. And I'm Omar. Yes. Today we're joined by Rachel Spencer, icon, YouTube <laughs> sensation, um, and just everything in between those things. <laughs> welcome. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Um, yeah, like I, I haven't done anything like this before, so this is gonna be super fun. Very excited to meet you guys too. Oh, yeah. We're about to have the best time. It's gonna ever. be so fun. It's gonna be a good time. Um, <laughs> so quickly, before we get started, let's talk about uh, your handles. First of all, where can people find you on the internet? You're mainly on YouTube, right? Yeah, so I'm mainly, if someone were to ask me, I would say, yeah, I'm mainly a YouTuber. Um, that is kind of where I started, but all my handles are the exact same. It's just Rach Speed, R A C H S P E E D. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the same. I had to secure them. Oh my God. I love that <laughs> so, for you. Good. Yeah. That's great. No underscores, sure no I dashes. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Have, no extra yeah, so, E's or. We have, yeah. we have so many underscores <laughs> split between our <laughs> It's really hard. Um, and you're also based in Toronto, right? Yes, I'm based in Toronto, born in Toronto, so very familiar with the city. Mm -hmm. Love living here. So. Lovely. Yeah. Very cool. Um, do you want to go into the rapid fire question? Okay, yeah. So, uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna have a lightning round of just some quick questions. We thought it'd be hey, really fun do to it. do like yeah. a little icebreaker, <laughs> just because you know we want to uh, get to know you. Not only that, but also <laughs> determine whether or not you are <laughs> my kind of person. Oh, okay. Pineapple, <laughs> pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? I'm not a pineapple. Thank on pizza. you. I'm I'm Thank just you. not, I just, I can't get into it. Uh, yeah, I've never been, so. <sighs> We're best friends now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. What's yeah. your favorite pizza? Controversial, but yeah. Favorite pizza? Well, I actually don't eat meat. So I love a good margarita pizza. Like I love when pesto's on pizza, it's really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty easygoing and I love cheese, so. Last <laughs> meme that made you laugh. Okay, there's this one I saw and it was it was really really funny. It was um show. basically I need to like find it. It was so funny. It was <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I need to find it. It was so funny. Do you think it yours? Huh? Do you know yours? A uh, last meme. Um every single TikTok that comes from my free page. I saw this one. It said motivational speaker. There's a lion in everybody. And then it says the lion in me and the lions from like the natural history museum. It looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's very, um, that's very me. That's so. <laughs> okay. Let's go. These are yes. lightnings. So we have to go. Have you ever been recognized okay. by a fan in real life? I actually have. And funny enough, um, my boyfriend and I, we were both in our masks. So I have no idea how they recognize us. Oh my God. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. In the group chat, who are you? Unfortunately, <laughs> I think I'm like, I think I'm the absent one. <laughs> like, like I'm the one, like if they're making plans or everything, like everyone's going back and forth making the plans. Then I like pipe in at the end. I'm like, sounds good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's too much like, sometimes. <laughs> All of my group chats are yeah, muted and I'll just come in at the end and be like, sure. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I'm like, I'm good with anything. <laughs> just kind of easygoing, so I'll just pop in. <laughs> I love that, simple. And will you, yeah. will you pay extra for guac at wherever yes. you are? Yes. <laughs> yes, good. 100%. I am it is worth I'm that it. girl. Especially especially because I don't eat meat. Like, I feel like I need that extra something. For sure. So, always. Well, I think it's safe to say that you just passed the vibe check. So. Yes, you can stay. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Okay, hard-hitting questions. 
We're going to get into it. Yeah. Okay. Number one, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you. Not engaged. Yeah. yeah. Not engaged yet, yeah, but yeah. definitely okay, in, well, the near, the in the near future. <laughs> on the road. On the road to engagement. <laughs> Um, Thank you. And yeah. also the house, like I, I saw, I saw your reaction to. Yeah. Oh my god, you're getting this house, and so I want to ask you how how is it for you sharing so many personal parts of your life out publicly on the internet for all to see? Like, what is what what's that process like for you? First of all, um, and like, yeah, how does it how does it feel? Honestly, like I didn't really start like like I said, I've done just really clothing and stuff like that. So showing these very vulnerable points in my life uh, has been really different for me because I remember when I shared my reaction when we got our house and I'm getting very emotional there. I was like, wow, this is the first time I've really shown myself crying on the Internet. Like I don't really show my day to day or if I'm if I'm having a bad day, I really do make I've always done this. I've made a very avid effort to not record it. If I don't feel like recording, I don't feel like filming. I'm I'm just not going to do it. Like I I really try to set that boundary for myself. So it um, not that I was upset about the house, just never really showing an emotional side for me. So it's been it's been definitely really different. <laughs> um, but I've enjoyed it. I've, I have really enjoyed it. And I have constantly learned what my boundaries are, what I'm willing to share, what I'm not willing to share, um, what I want to share in the future. And for the engagement stuff specifically, and even the house stuff, I feel like it's not really talked about a lot. And um, these are still kind of taboo subjects almost, or people try to create this facade and just like, you don't know what's happening. And they're like, okay, we bought a house. Like there's so much more to it that I found so important to know. And even with engagement ring shopping, there's so much I didn't know about diamonds. So it's been an educational experience for me. And I'm just excited that maybe other people will learn from it. That's actually so true. Like whenever you think of people like, doing like ah we bought a house announcement it's like woo it's like and then it feels like the, you don't see the progression or or it, it it kind of it kind of shows this like un almost unattainable perfect yeah. end result without showing like the really like difficult and vulnerable places that you yeah are in to get there um and so that's really commendable but and like thank, thank you. you for sharing for sharing that <laughs> side of your life Thank you so much. Yeah, especially with the feedback I got from the engagement stuff, people were like, wait, like, don't you want this to be a surprise or like what's going on? I'm like, well, we have a dog and a house together. <laughs> like, it's not much of a surprise. Like, it's something we've obviously yeah, like it's something we've obviously talked about and uh, something I would I would want to talk about with my partner before uh, they they go there, <laughs> obviously. And um, it was really fun doing that together as well and just going through this whole process together. I know nothing about a proposal, like I know as much as anyone else would. So we're deciding to leave that up to a surprise, but we obviously know it's, it's happening at some point. I just don't know what's going on. I'm not like planning my own proposal or anything, which I think will be kind of driving me crazy a little bit, but I'm gonna leave that up to, I'm gonna leave that up to my boyfriend, Dylan. But yeah, like uh, we've, always, we've always been a team. We've always done things together. Mm -hmm. We've been together since uh, we were in second year of university, so it's been a very wow. long time. It's always been a, it's, it's been wow. a strong relationship. <laughs> yeah, really and now I'm 27, so very. Right. It's been yeah, it's been a long time since we were 19. So, well, I love that. I think we have the same mindset as well that we do these things together. I mean, obviously, being in a queer relationship, there's no like, man does this, woman does this. Um, and I think it's just it's really beautiful when a couple decides that they want to have these really personal moments together instead of like separating them out into like traditional roles and like just building something new together. I think that like building new tra traditions is, is really special. Yeah. And I think, yeah, especially with like, especially with like things like, you know, looking for a wedding ring, ring like tr the traditional thing would be like the man would go and pick the ring, but like, yeah. You want to know that you want to make sure your ring is n not garbage. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, <laughs> really, it's true because they could be way off. You don't know. They could but also be. on top of it, I, I think a lot of women actually do talk about what they or or just people in general. They talk they talk about this with their partners a lot about what ring they like, what styles, and it's just it's never really shared on the internet. Like that whole journey is never really shared in general. Like people go engagement ring shopping all the time together. It's just. Um, I guess we're just doing it on the internet. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very, um, it, it's something that everyone does, but I guess it's just hard to find research. <laughs> so 
I, I'm glad we're sharing it. Yeah, I guess then in, in, in your own way, you're like normalizing people going out and doing this fun thing together, like mm-hmm. as a yeah, couple like, instead of... I don't think it has to be taboo at all. Yeah, um, totally. I think it's... And it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's taboo, I guess, period. I think it's really, it's just really fun and it should be fun. So, uh, yeah, I just really have tried to keep those videos light and just easy. Cause I think at the end of the day, you just want to see the diamonds, right? Yeah. You want to see the jewelry. <laughs> so yeah, like we just been just showing everything, trying everything on and just having the best time. That's so fun. Oh my God, it's so lovely. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, well, like speaking about your videos, so you have that series that you're working on, but you also do a lot of thrifting. And thrifting is something that we love a lot. Like we go thrifting pretty much every week to find new things. Um, so I just want to ask like, what made you introduce that into your content? And what was, what was kind of the starter for that? Yeah, well, actually in university, I decided to start this little like it wasn't even a business at the beginning. Um, I guess I was in my third year of undergrad and we I was part of this charity fashion show where they were doing this little pop-up shop. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll make something for it and just sell it. So I decided to thrift these vintage flannels and paint like customized things on the back. And then that kind of became a hit. And then it kind of became this thing at the the school I was at. And I started doing custom orders for everybody. So I was going to all the thrift stores, trying to like find all these flannels and all this stuff. And it ended up becoming kind of my part slash full-time job when I was at school. Um, And it ended up paying my rent while I was at school, which was really, really great. So I've been familiar with the thrift store because of that, but really I wasn't looking for myself. I was really just looking for, yeah, vintage thrifted flannels and stuff. Cause I always like when they're worn versus when they're brand new and stiff. But then from there I started looking at other stuff. (laughs) I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then I met one of my best friends who also does thrifting here on YouTube. So I kind of, I guess it kind of started from there. And uh, obviously the environmental impact is also super huge as well. So that's very important to me. And also I just don't think things are made the same anymore (laughs) to be honest for a lot of stuff. And (laughs) I, I, fashion is cyclical. So if you can get a deal, like why not? So they're just, there's there's no losing in thrifting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's more well for us. It's really the environmental impact is really huge for us as well. Like I think everyone should try to thrift as much as they can in areas where you know it's not taking away from marginalized people who need that for like you know their <laughs> their clothes. Um, but for um, it's really fun. It's just like a fun like yes uh, like a like a I don't know like a thing to do. Quest. It's a fun yeah. find it's treasure like, hunt because yeah. you yeah. come in with like an idea of what you want. You're like ooh I want like a sweater vest, and then you come out with like. I don't know, a ball gown. And you're like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> who knew I'd find this today? For me, it, it it's it's just like the most economic way of shopping as well. And yeah, like you always find something unique. You never know what you're going to find. Uh, for my friends and I, we used to, before the pandemic, we used to go across the border and thrift in different cities. And that was really fun because you just really don't know. Like the, sh- the thrift shopping in New York City was so different than Toronto and the thrift shopping in uh, Miami was completely different. So it was, it's just, you just really never know what you're going to get. And uh, I just love, I don't know if there, there's psychology behind that, but uh, I love the thrill of the find. I, I really do. <laughs> it's yeah. so fun. Oh, God. <laughs> um, okay, so back to YouTube. I feel like, yeah, you have like such a broad spectrum of videos that you create. Um, what's been like your most like exciting thing that you've like shared or posted and like, yeah, like what's what's been the the best video, your most exciting video to create, um, and then also an, an another another question from that question, like what was like one of your biggest hits, and like how did that feel? Yeah, um, well, actually, they kind of mold into one another. So when my boyfriend and I we signed our lease on our first apartment in Toronto, I was looking at restoration hard I was looking at the cloud sofa the iconic cloud mm-hmm. sofa that everyone has in their place except it's literally twenty thousand dollars <laughs> which is like yeah. s- stupid like story yeah. it's just like that's crazy um especially for a little one-bedroom apartment so sure. I kept like humming and hawing over like 
what what can go in this space. I was looking through all these sofas, they were a little bit out of my budget, and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make it. <laughs> like That's always kind of my solution. So I started looking at Ikea, and I was like, okay, we're gonna get these two twin beds, we're gonna make this L shape, we're gonna get this plywood, and I'm gonna document the whole thing. So I put up this video, and it was like, we made our cloud sofa, or whatever, I, I don't remember what I called it, but I didn't expect it to be a, a hit or anything, but I guess a lot of people were in that same predicament. And um, it's, it's a very almost controversial video because some people were like, that's so dumb. <laughs> and then <laughs> half the people were like, this is genius. I'm doing oh this gosh. myself. Yeah. It's amazing. So seeing seeing like uh, people who watch me tag me in their own little sofa DIYs and this, it became this whole little unexpected thing that I was just... It, at the time, I wasn't doing a lot of home decor content, so it was very surprising to me that that even kind of hit it off. But I think that just the problem solving of that video is something that I'm very, really proud of because I've always made it a priority of mine, even before I was thrifting, to make sure that my channel was accessible, that it um, that it was affordable because I love fashion. And I always found that growing up that I'd be flipping through all these magazines and stuff and it would be so unattainable. And I really love showing like look for less and how you don't have to spend like an arm and a leg to get a certain look. It's, um, I, I just, that's always been my philosophy. So I really just try to keep true to that. And I feel like that's a huge example of that, the DIY sofa video. I guess, do you have any, do you have any um, actionable tips? Do you have any tips about like how you edit videos or how you like do the kind of behind the scenes stuff, stuff that, people don't see and if people are watching this and are interested in becoming a, a youtuber or a youtube creator like what would you say to them? tell us all your secrets the secrets <laughs> yes <laughs> i think it's just you don't need to spend tons of money to make a good youtube video or tiktok or real anything any piece of content you really you can use your phone and make a youtube channel so i think yeah just not feeling i think the biggest thing that people usually say is I really want to start a YouTube channel but cameras are so expensive or but Final Cut Pro is so expensive and I'm like hey like that's you have a phone there's so many free editing softwares that I actually use for TikTok that could easily be done for YouTube as well so I think that's just a huge misconception that you don't need to spend a lot of money just use what you have and go from there you don't need there's no upfront cost um, for the most part as long as you have a phone <laughs> but yeah, I think there's that. And then I guess my other tip is, this is actually something I learned from TikTok and you guys are so good at it, is just really keeping the retention of your audience and really just um, just keeping them engaged. So when I do the sound effects, when I do the extra B-roll, when I have things pop up, it's really just because when I'm watching in, I'm starting to get bored, I know someone else is already bored when I'm rewatching and reviewing my videos. So I'm like, okay, I have to put something in there. And even they, they say like the attention span to like is one and a half seconds, I think, or something like that. Don't quote me, but when you capture on a it's YouTube video short, yeah. <laughs> and probably TikTok, it's like even less because the <laughs> videos are seconds, really very short. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So you have to put the inter the really interesting stuff or like just like a hook in the beginning. So that's why I often show three clips are kind of highlights of the video so people get a good idea. Um, if I'm talk if I'm talking for a little bit too long, I'm like, okay, how can I sum this up? So just really thinking to keep the momentum. Kind of like a song as well. You don't want the same thing going over and over again. Um, yeah, it's very similar for I think any content. So Yeah. Yeah, I think that's my best advice. Yeah, no, I think that's really good advice. Um, <laughs> we yeah. all have the attention span of a squirrel nowadays. <laughs> really Especially for Especially TikTok. Especially since I mean, TikTok, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we create short form videos and normally like we try to keep our videos 30 seconds or less because normally, unless it's like a really interesting video, most people on TikTok don't watch, you know, the three minute videos unless it's like a, a renovation or something yeah. and people are really into that. Um, so it's really, that's the most challenging thing I, th I think about like creating, especially content that you want to go viral or you want to like do well, is make sure to keep, keep everybody, as many people on the video for as long as possible. That is literally what you should do. I mean, that's YouTube as well, right? <laughs> um, yeah, no, exactly. And the other thing is fulfill your promises. So I find this with TikTok and YouTube, like if you're doing a clickbaity title, like make sure you're going to fulfill that title 
because I find with TikTok too, when someone's like, oh my God, I found this super cool thing or blah, 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 blah. And then they just like never show it or it was just- yeah. Right, it's like my like part to two. And I'm like, I'm gonna throw my yeah. phone down for Yeah, it. exactly. So and it doesn't make you wanna follow them either, yeah, right? Exactly. Because if they're gonna keep doing this to you, it's like, there's no trust there. You don't build that trust with your audience. So yeah, definitely fulfill your promises. Like if this is the best thing you've ever found on Amazon, make sure it's the best thing you've ever found on right. Amazon. Right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a question that I would love to yeah. like uh, kind of like c- conclude this in like a in like a nice mm, self-reflection kind of way okay when it comes to like mental health boundaries like burnout that's a that, I feel like burnout itself is like a huge thing that like we have experienced over the past year too mm-hmm. like how do you maintain um, just like a healthy balance um, and what do you do for yourself if you do experience burnout? Like, if you're, if you're comfortable talking about, like, your mental health journey yeah. in terms of content creation and, like, being on yeah. the internet. Yeah, absolutely. I actually started really doing my YouTube channel at, like, the peak of my anxiety. I had really bad anxiety in 2017 to the point where I couldn't really leave my house. I was just very, very anxious. So I, I just kind of went from there. And I think that the creativity aspect of YouTube really helped me, uh, I guess, get through that as well. And it was something I could do from my bedroom and not have to leave my house. So that's why I really did like it. But for something, especially during the pandemic and with burnout, I I still don't have, a, like, to be honest, I don't have the complete answer because I still definitely burn out multiple times in a, in a year because I, I'm still trying to figure out what that boundary is. But one thing I've done for myself that I've actually done for the first time truly and committed to it is I see a therapist, which I think is amazing and has definitely changed my life. I used to see her weekly and now we're a little bit more flexible, but it definitely helps with my stress, my burnout, anything that is on my mind, I speak uh, with them about. And I really do, I really do love that. I think also, it's just not something I I speak very openly about having a therapist. I it's like literally yeah. changed my life. I tell everyone they should do it. But at the same yeah, time, it's sure. it's kind of like dating. You still have to find the person that you gel with, obviously. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I think just talking to someone that's a little bit out of the out of your bubble is really, really helpful. Also, talking to your friends is obviously very helpful. But if you have the means to do so, I think therapy is incredible and has really really helped me and um it's something that i used to think oh it's so expensive i like i don't know if i should do it but uh it's all kind of relative right we all spend in different ways so this is something that i've definitely prioritized over other things that i can cut back on so yeah there's there's that and then there's also this whole notion that i remember like that girl boss culture and like hustle 24 7 that whole like weird thing that was no, showing up on social media i have some choice words about that yeah. like obviously there's certain themes you could pull from there that are helpful i suppose but it's just it's not cute like we we grew up yeah. thinking like like you know you used to hear like oh i didn't i only slept like how many hours this week and like we thought yeah. that was not we but like people think that's cute like it's not like you should yeah, take cute. care of yourself it's a and just cute. because just because you're getting an adequate amount of sleep and that you're eating well and that you have time to work out and that you have a saturday to yourself it doesn't mean you're not working hard and mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you're lazy so just yeah. trying to change that narrative and even in my own mind sometimes i feel like that too because i think especially as university students you you almost like yeah you compete with yourself like how hard can i go so and then you just get into the workforce and then it's almost the same thing so just really setting those boundaries and especially as some like especially as a creator where in in ways i'm almost working all the time because i'm always thinking about certain things like Mm -hmm. really trying to find that time to shut off or Mm -hmm. self-care sundays or whatever we want to call it like just really taking that time being like it's okay if i don't do anything today i'm really working on that (laughs) like um and establishing those breaks for me is very important so i think what's really interesting is that like when you think of productivity people would be like oh doing like everything that's on your to-do list but but like taking a break is productive in itself because it's what keeps you 
going. It, it, what, it, it's what stops you from burning out. And okay, I've never experienced this until I moved to this city. <laughs> the hustle culture scene here. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Get it's away from me. Get away from me. It's so icky. It's not healthy at all. And it's mm-hmm. so not really healthy. Not. It's like I hustle yeah. like 24 7. Good for you. I got eight hours of sleep and I'm so happy. Totally. It's just like it's not sleep. <laughs> it's a really strange yeah. narrative that like I didn't, I didn't, um, I know. I think I kind of like tried to, uh, it, it, it gave me a lot of pressure when I was first starting. Like when we first moved here, I was working full time and then trying to like create content on the side, like never really having the time to do so. And I like sacrificed sleep time. I sacrificed like mm-hmm. a lot of my mental health. I wasn't like in a really good place because I was trying to do so many things because I wanted to achieve, achieve, achieve because mm-hmm. everyone around me was seemingly achieving everything. Um, but like, it's, yeah, it's That's when you like, you don't, you don't believe yeah, yeah. everything that you see on the internet. Totally. <laughs> there's so much more that goes behind. There's so much more to it than like grinding 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah, no, for sure. And like, even just attributing your self worth to how hard you work and all that yeah, is just totally. so not something to do. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. definitely, yeah. Something that we actively try to to change our mindset on because it's it's easy to fall into that like i still have my days where i'm like oh yeah. like all i ate ate slash drank today was coffee and it's four because <laughs> i've just been on my computer but i'm i don't <laughs> feel like it's literally <laughs> no that's like me like yeah if you ask like people always ask me for like doing a what i eat in a day video and stuff like that i'm like guys i'm not the i am not who you yeah, should be you don't looking at it. it's really yeah it's not yeah so oh my but God. Yeah, like obviously we still have our days, but I just, yeah, just try to change that whole idea for myself because I think it's it's okay. You can work hard and also mm-hmm. sleep. You can like work hard yeah. and also mm-hmm. eat well and exercise. And yeah, I think your your health mentally and physically is definitely the most important thing. Like you can't do yeah. anything if you don't have I, that, so. Yeah, I think that's, a, it's especially problematic in our industry and like content creation and being online 24 seven, because we're not only like focused on our content, we also see everyone else's content and we see what everyone else is doing. And we're like, oh my gosh, that person got 4 million views on this TikTok and I haven't done anything in a week. And then you feel that and you're like, wow, I should work harder. But like, no, because we're all on our own journeys. We all have different things. We're all just like doing some stuff on the internet and just like, Ugh. I, I think it's it, the comparison syndrome is something that I've struggled with personally for a lot of my time as you know in the sphere and something that I've only like kind of like recently in the past like year and a half yeah. through the pandemic have like toned down a little bit more and kind of like spoke to myself and just like been more kind to myself and and what I'm going through. Rachel, one absolute joy you are to speak to. Yeah, um, thank you thank for you sharing so much. So this was so with fun. Us. You guys are <laughs> wonderful hosts. I could not do this job. (laughs) (laughs) So good. Thank you so much. Um, I do have like a a little last like ending question. Yes. Yeah. End off like, you know, okay. Um, Because I want to know, and I'm sure your audience wants to know, what is something that maybe your fans, your audience, your followers, your viewers don't know about you that you want them to know about you? Or maybe something they'd be really surprised to know about you. Mm. Hmm, let me think. I don't know, I'm pretty transparent on the internet, but I kind of realized, oh, like there's actually a lot that I do keep to myself and stuff like that, but it's probably that I am not naturally organized. <laughs> not I am not a naturally organized person. I think like people people have this idea because of the way you show your house and the way you show like everything. Like obviously I'm, I've always been the type of person to clean up before someone comes over. So just like my videos, mm. I clean up before <laughs> I, I do them, but it doesn't come naturally to me. It comes naturally to my boyfriend, does not come naturally to me. So it's something I have to very much like work hard at. I love it, but- it Sounds familiar. Yeah, it's not. Shut up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, the Gemini's yeah, and the Leo's. <laughs> yeah, like it's definitely, I was a messy kid growing up. like. I think until I started buying my own furniture, I didn't under, I didn't get it. So now I get it. But yeah, it's very, I have to actively think about wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Exposed. Those Exposed. Yeah. Exposed. You know those TikToks where, um, I don't know, I get them a lot. Maybe it's just my For You page, but it's like, 
don't put it down, put it away. Don't put it down, yes! put it away. It's like this oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know which one No, because I'm organized. <laughs> okay, so like in the morning. <laughs> okay, I'm about to expose myself. So oh, your, your coffee cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So like, I like, yeah. I will like have my coffee in the morning and I'll just like leave it on the kitchen counter. Please note that I wake up <laughs> earlier than, than him. Yeah. Okay, I hate... <laughs> I just waking up isn't my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Ever. So if I can like prolong it as long as possible, I will. And so uh, I make him so, coffee yeah. and like, then I bring it to him and then he drinks it in bed and then he brings it to the to the kitchen and then puts it on the counter on, on top, the dishwasher on top of the dishwasher on top of the dishwasher not even in the sink not even like and I'm, anywhere yeah, close. I'm trying my hardest yeah. to put it away not just put it down are you, this, you honestly, you honestly that sounds like the morning I have with my boyfriend he makes my coffee every morning and gives yeah. it to me not in bed yeah. but like he'll give it to me and then I just leave it there I don't even finish it I have this thing where like, I <laughs> finish it like I'll have two coffees a day but I only finish half of them so <laughs> it's really one coffee yeah, but, yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. you're speaking my language it's funny exposed wow. <laughs> we're very alike I love this <laughs> okay. wow <laughs> wow going off let i want to finish on this question mm -hmm. what are you most excited for in the future you obviously have a lot coming up a lot of exciting things mm -hmm. happening what are you most excited about um i'm most excited i guess to see what this like whatever what's in store honestly i'm excited to travel eventually when it's like safe to we're still kind of you know obviously going back and forth on that because it changes every day um i'm obviously excited for this new season of our lives that hopefully will happen pretty soon um and yeah just trying to live a very thoughtful and like mindful life i really have just been i think if anything the pandemic has taught me is to just be very grateful and just very mindful of the mm -hmm. things i have and that nothing is nothing nothing is permanent which is good it's, it's it's good you know everything's always changing yeah. so just really enjoy like where you're at right now and if i were to tell myself five years ago that i would be here i'm not mm -hmm. sure if i would necessarily believe that so you just have to just enjoy what you have enjoy take lots of breaks get plenty of sleep <laughs> um but yeah i'm just excited in general for what's to come because yeah, you just never know like if anything this year taught us is that it's just been so unpredictable so literally we talk about this all the time because a lot of people would say like i mean back in like university people like what's your 10 year plan i'm like 10 years i don't know what like three years ago i wouldn't imagine that we'd be here like mm -hmm. hosting this yeah. and doing this like i don't know what 10 years will bring i don't know what the next year will bring and that's what you mentioned in like enjoying the present enjoying mm -hmm. like what you have right now is i think something that yeah. everyone should realize and should like and enjoying the heart. process even because yeah totally. um even with like the house i, I always think about like because i love interior decorating and stuff like that but i always think like the funnest part is going through it like when it's mm. done you want to find another project so it's kind of the totally. same thing with like your yeah. life like just really enjoy yeah the the process and um yeah i'm just really excited for yeah what everything and everything that's good is coming manifesting good things so Woo! Yay. yeah oh thank you so much for giving us your time today and also, thank you so much for all of those incredible tips. Yeah. When we do eventually decide to break back into the YouTube sphere, we will implement them all. Yes, and probably have yes, more we'll questions collab. for you. Totally. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. It'll happen. Yes. It'll happen. So maybe over winter. Let's go thrifting together. Yes. Oh Let's God. do it. I That'd oh be so God. fun. I'm down. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. We'll let you know. Um, before we go, let people know where they can find you again. Yes, I'm at Rage Speed on everything, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, yeah, Pinterest, literally everything. Um, so you can check, find me there. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Okay, well, we're going to end what it here. Us? What about us? You can oh, find what about us? Yes. Oh, what about us? Oh, you <laughs> yeah. can find us at, well, TikTok together at Matt underscore and underscore Omar. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me on Instagram at, at Mr. Benfield. Mr. And you can Benfield. find me on Instagram at omarahmed.co lovely Woo. lovely and thank you for joining us for another episode of Behind the Choices with Panago Pizza make sure to like comment subscribe do all the good things and we'll see you next time bye 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 <laughs> <laughs>